Hi there. Welcome to the second lecture of Eco 101. Today, we are going to learn the very first economic model of this course. But before I jump into explaining the theory behind this economic model, I will explain the first few minutes explaining and talking about basic graphing skills. So let's begin. Honestly, what I'm going to discuss right now is probably a bit futile to most of you since these are the things that you have seen repeatedly from your high school and I'm sure these are quite set in your head. But there's no harm in refreshing and reviewing what's already known. So let's kind of see this. The straight vertical line that you can see on the graph is called the Y or vertical axis and the horizontal line is the X axis both pointed by a green arrow on the slide. Inside the graph, the blue line, that is called the curve. It is called a curve regardless of the shape of the curve. Let it be a straight or bent or curved line. We will regard and call all of them as curves. Now, let's begin from the top left graph number A, which shows a positive linear relationship that is a straight curve. Here, the equation of a straight line is y is equals to mx plus c, where m and c are two real numbers. m gives us the slope, which basically tells us the rate of change of y due to a change in x, and c is the value of y at which the line cuts the y-axis. Now, let's look at the top middle graph number b. This shows the relationship between distance printed in the horizontal axis and the recovery time on the vertical axis. Which in simple words is basically the time it takes the heart rate to return to its normal resting rate. Notice carefully. This time the relation is an upward sloping one that starts quite flat but then becomes steeper as we move along the curve. The reason this curve slopes upward and becomes steeper is because the additional recovery time needed from sprinting an additional 100 meters increases. And this makes sense, right? I mean, think normally. It should take less than 5 minutes for the, fur the heart rate to recover and return to its normal rate from the first 100 meters of running but more than 10 minutes to recover from the third 100 meters of running which is very natural right and therefore this graph shows a relation of increasing at an increasing rate whereas if we now move to the top third figure number c this graph shows the relationship between the number of problems worked by a student and the amount of study time. This relationship is an upward relation sloping one that starts out quite steep and becomes flatter as we move away from the origin. Now see if this makes sense. This time study time becomes less and less productive as you increase the hours spent studying and because and since because you become more and more tired or maybe bored, right? So this time, this graph is actually showing us a relationship which is increasing but at a decreasing rate. Essentially, the bottom three graphs are apparently the vice versa of the top graphs. So I'm hoping you should be able to figure it out for yourselves. All right now, since we have covered the basic graphing skills, Let's start with the very first model of this course, which reflects some amazing economic concepts that will become quite relevant to you when you understand it. So I hope I'll be having your full interest in learning this model, which is called the Production Possibility Frontier, in short, PPF. So now, let's go slowly and try to fully grasp the concept behind this model. You know a country can produce any number of goods and services by using their resources. For example, just within the borders of Bangladesh, 
thousands of goods and services are produced every day using thousands of different types of resources. But for now, for the sake of understanding this model, let us simplify things a bit here and assume that Bangladesh only produces two goods. And let us also assume that those two goods that Bangladesh produces are CDs and pizzas only. So every year, Bangladesh will use all its resources for the productions of CDs and pizzas. And the people of the country consume only these two goods. In this model, as you can see, CDs are on the vertical axis and the pizza is on the horizontal. Now, if your country is on point B, for instance, then one pizza and 14 CDs are being produced. And what if it was at point E? Then four pizzas and five CDs. Pretty simple, right? You can say all this just by looking to the graph. Now this model, although looks very simple, it actually represents a lot of economic concepts and facts. Let's see them one by one. First, let's start with scarcity. The PPF model illustrates scarcity. This is because the country cannot attain anything outside the frontier, which is the blue line. We can produce at all points inside the PPF and on the top of the PPF line, which is the blue line. And these are all attainable points. But anything outside the blue line or outside the PPF boundary are the unattainable points. This is because outside the PPF line, the country do not have sufficient resources for any further production. Second is production efficiency. Note, we can only achieve production efficiency if we cannot produce more of one good without producing less of some other good. And when production is efficient, we are at any point on top of PPF or the blue line. So if you are at any point inside the PPF blue line, such as point Z or Z, production is inefficient. I repeat, if the country is at any point inside the PPF line, for example at point Z or Z, then production is called to be inefficient. And this is because the country have some unused resources or have some misallocated resources which are not being fully utilized. Therefore, to sum it up, on top of the blue PPF line, production is efficient. Inside the blue line, it is inefficient. And outside the blue line, it is unattainable. Hope that's clear now. Third, trade-off. I'm sure you remember this term from the first lecture. And as I said, we'll be using these terms throughout this course. So here in the PPF, trade-off is being represented. Every choice along the PPF involves a trade-off, that we must give up something to get something else. So look in the diagram. If we wish to get more pizza, then we have to give up CDs and vice versa. That is, give up pizza in order to get more CDs. And now finally, opportunity cost. Once again, this is two from our very first lecture. Remember, the opportunity cost of an action is the highest valued alternative foregone. The PPF helps us make the concept of opportunity cost even more clear and enables us to calculate it as well. Along the PPF, there are only two goods, right? So there is only one alternative foregone, that is, some quantity of the other good. Given our current resources and technology, we can produce more pizzas only and only if we produce fewer or lesser CDs. So therefore, the opportunity cost of producing an additional pizza is the number of CDs we must forego or sacrifice. Note, 
I just mentioned a while ago that PPF allows us to calculate opportunity cost. So what I've done is I've made a tutorial video for you where I'm going to cover how to calculate opportunity cost from the PPF. I'd recommend refer to the PPF opportunity cost calculation tutorial video right after you are done with this lecture. And this will give you a better comprehensibility of this model. Now, let's look into some questions of PPF. The first is, why is the opportunity cost increasing in PPF? I'll explain this to you both theoretically and mathematically. The mathematical part, once again, I'll be explaining in the PPF opportunity cost calculation tutorial video. So keep an eye out for the tutorial video. And in this video, let's just look in the theoretical aspect of the question. Now, given our current resources and technology, we know we can produce more pizzas only if we produce fewer or lesser CDs. The opportunity cost of producing an additional pizza is the number of CDs that we must forego or sacrifice. Similarly, the opportunity cost of producing an additional CD is the quantity of pizzas that we must forego or sacrifice. So basically, the idea here is to get more of one, we have to give up more and more of the other. Now, try to make sense of this. Why do you think this is the case? To explain this, let's imagine splitting our country into two parts. Just like the picture you can see on the slide of Italy being slashed into two. Now imagine the top part of Italy only produces CDs and the bottom part of Italy produces only pizza. And let us also imagine Italy is at point B of the PPF curve. That is, they are producing 14 CDs and only one pizza. Now, we know how Italians like pizza a lot, and so they wish to increase pizza production further. So what should they do now? Provided they have limited resources, just as what the PPF is trying to show us, that we live in scarcity with limited resources. So Italy has to give up some resources from CD production and transfer it to the pizza production. Now remember, I told you in the beginning, top part of Italy is just for CD and bottom part is only for pizza production. Therefore now, in order to increase pizza production, Italy has to move resources from top part to the bottom part of the country. That is, they have to move CD producers and make them produce pizza. Therefore, now you tell me a person who has all his lifetime produced CDs, how efficient do you think that same person will be in making pizza? Not very good, right? I mean, obviously, look, this guy who has produced CDs his entire life, now, when you abruptly put him in the pizza making segment, you can't expect him to be producing as much as efficiently as other pizza guys, right? So therefore, to do the job of one original pizza producer, you will have to bring in more and more CD producer from the top to the bottom and the more CD producer you bring, essentially you are giving up more and more CDs. So I hope you can see the point now. When we shift resources from one production to another, we have to give up more and more of product A to get a bit of product B. This is a very relevant point in almost every means of production and this should make sense to you. And in the same manner, we arrive to the second question, that is why the PPF curve is bowed outward, which simply is due to the law of increasing opportunity cost and because resources are not 
all equally productive in all activities. And we have already discussed why opportunity cost increases, why we move along the PPF curve. This is because when we move production from one point to another, opportunity cost tends to increase. And we have just given a simple explanation and example of this a minute ago. With this, I end this lecture and I hope you are clear with the theory and the very first model of PPF. Goodbye.